Family Theater presents Barbara Hale, Lyle Betger, and Margaret O'Brien. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Babysitter, starring Barbara Hale and Lyle Betger. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Margaret O'Brien. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, The Babysitter, starring Barbara Hale as Nancy and Lyle Betger as Ned. <laughs> Ned Carter, he teaches science at the senior high school, is best known and respected, however, for his ability as coach of the school's basketball team. Ned's talent as a coach goes completely ignored by his pretty wife, Nancy, who hardly ever lets Ned help in the important business of bringing up Jeff Carter, just nearing nine months old. Ned's patience is beginning to wear thin, if this scene isn't any indication. Nancy, be reasonable. Why can't I take care of Jeff just this once? I've told you a hundred times, Ned Carter, taking care of a baby is a mother's job. Besides, you're tired. Yes, sick and tired of forever taking a back seat wherever Jeff is concerned. Oh, now, don't get yourself all upset. It might not be good for little Jeff to hear his father shouting, you know. I'm not shouting. I'm perfectly calm and collected, mm. but I don't know for how long. It seems unusual indeed that after taking all week long about going to Mother's Club at church tonight, you've suddenly decided to stay at home. Oh, you know why, Ned. Our babysitter can't come tonight. Well, what's the matter with me? Oh, stop being silly. You don't know anything about babies. I'd like to. I'd like to have a hand in taking care of Jeff. Oh. But every time I come near him, you give me that old routine about germs. Honest, honey. There's not a germ on me. No, oh, maybe not, but you know, a person can't be too careful these days. Why, you're at school all day, milling around with hundreds of children. You never can tell what you've picked up. Yes, lately all I've picked up is a nasty disposition. <laughs> yes, that's true. But there's a reason for it. Now look, sooner or later, Nancy, I've got to play a part in this business of raising our son, and I ought to start in now. Why now? There's plenty of time. No, I've been a bench sitter altogether too long. Now I want to be a babysitter. The worm turns. All right, worm. Turn and face the door. Go straight into the living room and find a nice book. Nothing doing. The worm stands pat. Get dressed. You're going to Mother's Club tonight, and that's that. Oh, Ned, I don't want to go. And besides, the baby hasn't even had his bath. I'll do it. What? And drown the child? Listen, giving Jeff his bath is harder than you think. Honey, I'll learn. Now, some other time. No, tonight. Now, hurry up. You haven't much time. Don't be silly. I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. Ned, I believe you're angry. Oh, you think so? You're serious. Well, of course I'm serious. Nancy, mm -hmm. for nine whole months, you've kept me at arm's length where Jeff is concerned. For nine months, I've let you have your own way with the boy. You've taken every possible precaution to safeguard him from everything. You're even protecting him against me. Now I'm tearing down the wall you've so neatly built up. <laughs> You're just being downright philosophical. Imagine you giving Jeff a bath. Now, honey, stop it. I don't want to be made fun of. Well, Ned, I wasn't. Yes, you are. You've been doing it ever since Jeff came, unconsciously perhaps, but every time you deny me the right to express myself about Jeff, you're making fun of me. You always laugh off everything I say. You, you shrug it off like it was some silly kind of chatter. Please don't be angry. Oh, now, honey, look, please. It's just, Don't cry. It's just that I've always imagined taking care of a baby was my job, that's all. Well, this may sound pretty dramatic, Nancy, but he's my son, too, you know. Oh, Ned. Honey, honey, now dry the tears. I don't want you to go to Mother's Club looking like a mistreated wife. Well, I'd like to go, but... And I... that settles it. Now, put on that pretty dress, honey, you know, the one with the big bow on the back. Go have yourself a time. The old man takes over tonight. Do you think you can handle him all right? Well, he's no Tarzan just yet. I think I can manage. I'll tell you what. Hmm? 
Let's ask Jeff. All right. Hey, Jeff. Now, now listen. You want your old man to take the reins tonight? How about that? Translated? Absolutely, Pop, old boy. Let's us have ourselves a time, too. <laughs> Okay, young fella. There, we finally got that mother of yours out of the house. Now, how's about a nice warm bath? Hey, take a look at those muscles. Now, here, let's take off the shirt, Jeff. That's it. Hey, you're quite a wiggler, huh? Now, now in you go. There. Nice, huh? Oh, doggone it, there's the door. Now, look, Jeffy, old boy, you sit there in the tub like a good little fellow while Daddy goes see who it is, okay? I'll be right back. Here, hey, wait here now. now. Let's not eat that nasty old bar of soap. Coming, coming. Hold your horses, I'm coming. Hi, Coach. Why, Bill Atkinson. Come in, boy, come in. What's the captain of my baseball team doing over here in this part of town? Did you forget, Coach? You said I should come over tonight to go over the baseball schedule. Oh, no. Yeah, I completely forgot. What's the matter, Coach? Too busy tonight? No, I'm babysitting, that's all. Well, that's nothing. I do it all the time. Well, well come on in, Bill. I've got Jeff in the tub. It looks like you soaked up a little water, too, Coach. <laughs> that boy of mine's quite a splasher. Uh, don't mind my getting personal, do you? But you don't do much for that apron in certain places. Oh. No, I guess I don't. Well, here's my boy. Say, Coach, you should not leave the boy alone in the tub like that. You might take him too much water. Yeah, say, he has slid down a bit, hasn't he? Here now, fella. Here, we sit up straight like a big boy. There. That's a nice little shaver, Coach. You know, he looks a little bit like you. I should hope to tell you. Well, how old? Oh, nine months. A little better, maybe. I forget. Well, he, he is kind of young to be sitting up in a bath and net alone, but... Well, then some kids are smarter than others. Hey, look, look. He's got a mouthful of water. What's the matter, fella? Grab him by the legs like this and hold his head down for a minute. Huh? That always drains out the water. Is that the way you do it? Well, sure. How else are you going to get out the water? Well, how come you know so much about babies, Bill? Well, used to be one myself, Coach, and well, besides, there's six more kids at home. Seven in all? Yep, I'm 16. I'm the oldest. No kidding. Yep. We got twin babies 11 months old, I guess, and they're Susie and Mike. Four and five years. Gladys, I think she's ten. Uh -huh. And Rod's twelve. That's the whole brood. Golly, that's quite a family. Say, <coughs> Jeff seems all right now, don't you think? Sure. Nothing wrong with gulping a little water. Hand me that towel, Bill. Here, let me dry him off. I'll give him a good rub. Okay. <coughs> yep, good rub is good for anybody. It stimulates the circulation. Well, you see, he likes it. He how's about some powder. What for? Baby powder, Coach. You gotta sprinkle it all over the kid. Oh, oh I, I didn't know. It makes him smell good. Say, it does smell good. Maybe I'll use this stuff after my bath from now on. <laughs> hey, with a frame like yours, you need a couple of pounds of this stuff. Hey, hand me that diaper, Coach. Say, so, you know, you're mighty handy. Ah, babies are no trouble at all. Plan to have a pack of them myself someday. Uh, can you spare a few pins, Coach? Oh, sure. I don't imagine you want me to tie knots at the side. Sure. Here you are. Not stick pins, Coach. Safety pins. Oh. Say, you don't know anything about babies, do you? No, I guess not. I'm just beginning to realize how much I have to learn. Oh, gone it, there's the phone. Just when things were going so well, too. Uh, I'll get it. Here's the kid's nighty. This hole here is for his head. I know that. Well, just wanted to make sure... Coming, coming. Okay, Jeffy, old boy. Now then, let's put on this nighty. That's it. Say, what happened to your head? Oh, oh, there it is. Thought I'd lost you for a minute. Now, we're doing fine, aren't we? Boy, won't your mother be surprised we hit it off swell? All settled, coach. Who was it, Bill? You better get a move on. They're waiting for you at school. Oh, my gosh. I forgot the coach's meeting tonight. Golly, I've forgotten just about everything, it seems. Well, you're not too late. Oh, I, I can't go, that's all. I wouldn't leave Jeff alone here in the house. Nancy'd kill me. Tell you what, you hustle over the meeting and I'll sit with Jeff. How's that? Oh, no. No, I couldn't do that. Why not? You said yourself I was pretty handy with babies. What you worrying about? Well, I, I know you're perfectly capable, Bill, but well, I... Well, that I... settles it. Jeff and I will get along fine. 
I'll teach him a few new strangleholds I learned in wrestling. Yeah. Well, all right, but, but you be careful with him. Oh, sure. I'll be the essence of delicacy. Hey, dig that? Fancy lingo, no less. I'm getting smart. Now, you can call me at school, Bill, if you need me. Oh, sure, sure. You better hurry, Coach. You're waiting. Okay, but now you be careful with Jeff. Well, you said that before. Well, all right. Bye now. I'll be back in less than an hour. Take your time, Coach. Hey, got anything to eat in this house? Yeah, just look in the icebox. Help yourself. Oh, well, that I will. That I will. Oh, you better hurry. Bye. So long, Coach. Hey, does Dad get a kiss, Jeff? <laughs> you be a good boy now. <laughs> Goodbye, Bill. Bye. Hello, dear Phil. You look tired. Hey, how's about a swig of nice milk before you hit the sack? You sure? Okay. Hey, let's make this trip piggyback. Okay? Which way's the kitchen? Hang on tight now. Jeff, me thinks I hear the gentle sound of a telephone in the distance. I guess we better answer it. Carter's residence, babysitter talking, rates on request. Bill, is that you? Well, sure thing, Jane. What gives? Your mother said I'd find you there. Can you come over right away? Well, I don't know. I'm taking care of the Carter baby. Oh, dear, and the gang wanted so to have you here tonight. We're going over the plans for the spring prom, and we need you. Honest, we do. Okay. Will you come over later? I'll come over right now. What about the baby? Well, what about the baby? I'm bringing him along, of course. <laughs> what a foolish question. Wonderful. I'm taking care of our baby tonight, too. Mom and Dad went to a show. Swell. We can compare the relative merits of our respective charges. Oh, Bill, you're so funny. Now, you hurry over here, Bill. Right. Be sure to wrap the baby up good and warm, Bill. Well, certainly, I know that. You women, always telling us men what to do and how to do it. Hang up, Jane. I'm practically there now. Bill, I'm back. Bill? Hey, Bill, where are you? Is that you, Ned? Oh, hi, Nancy. Back from the meeting already? Bill, where's the baby? Well, isn't he here with Bill? No, he isn't here. And besides, what, what's Bill got to do with it? Well, now, it was this way, honey. I, I had to go to coach's meeting, and I, you, I thought... That... You what? You went where? Um, coach's meeting. I, I forgot about it. But Bill offered to sit with a baby, and... The... Why, of all the silly, stupid things to do, how could you leave our little Jeff with that overgrown high school athlete, that scatterbrain? Now, hold it, Nancy. Billy's a good kid. And believe it or not, he's handy with kids. Don't you realize what's happened? The baby's gone. Oh, now, don't... Did you look under the blankets and all? I've looked everywhere. Oh, Ned, what are we going to do? Now, Nancy, don't upset yourself. Now, there must be a, a simple explanation for all of this. Come on. We'll go over to Bill's house. Well, no, Mr. Carter. Bill isn't here. I thought he was over at your place. He was, Mrs. Atkinson. Oh, Ned, Ned, the baby. What's happened to the baby? Oh, is anything the matter, Mrs. Carter? Your son, Bill, was left in charge of our little Jeff, and they've disappeared. Oh, now, Mrs. Carter, you mustn't worry. Bill's a whiz when it comes to babies. Takes care of ours all the time around okay. here. But where is he? And where's my Jeff? Now, honey, please, please don't, don't cry. We'll find them. <laughs> my baby. Oh, I'll never forgive myself for going out tonight. Oh, why, maybe Bill took the baby out for a bit of fresh air. You know, night air makes them tired and they sleep better. Ned Carter, I should have my head examined for letting you talk me into going to the mother's club. Never, never again. Oh, now, dear, nothing's happened that we know of, so let's don't jump to conclusions. The minute I leave you alone with Jeff, this has to happen. We can do without hysterics at this point. I'm glad you can be so calm about this, Ned Carter. Believe you me, this is the last time. The last time, do you understand? Good night, Mrs. Atkinson. This promises to mushroom into a full-sized family argument. Well, I'm... Sorry, folks, I wish I could be of more help, but you mind now, everything will be all right. Bill's a good boy. Of course he is. Oh, oh, say, wait a minute, I just remembered. Bill said something about the prom meeting tonight at Jane Austen's house. Oh? Yes, she called here to ask where he was. Oh, oh thanks. Thanks very much, mm -hmm. Mrs. Atkinson. Good night. <laughs> Good 
Yes, Mr. Carter, I'm Jane's father, but she's been in bed a half hour ago. Bill was here, though, with the baby. Say, he's cute. <laughs> the baby, I mean. Uh, slept like a top all the while the kids went over the prom preparations. Uh, do you know where Bill might be, Mr. Austin? Well, the last I heard, he was headed back to your place. Oh, good. Well, thanks, Mr. Austin. Thanks a lot. Can't you drive any faster, Nick? I'm speeding now, Nancy. Now, look, will you just sit back? We'll be home in a jiffy. Oh, look, look, he's not there. The house is completely dark. You should have come back by this time, I should imagine. Oh, Ned, if I'd only stayed home, if I'd only remained firm, and if you'd only let me do the thinking from now on where the baby is concerned. Stop it, Nancy. Now stop it. Now, how can you be so composed, so complacent about this, Ned? How can you sit there with a straight face and say you're not the least bit worried? Pretty hard-hearted, if you ask me. I'm not the hysterical type, Nancy. Look, what am I supposed to do? Start screaming? Sure, I'm worried. But you're not helping matters much. Oh, Ned, let's go to the police. Let's get the police. Okay, I suppose that's all we can do. But first, I'm going back to Bill's house, just to find out if he's called there. <laughs> Mrs. Atkinson, have you heard from Bill? Why, Mr. Carter, Bill called just a minute ago. He just hung up. Where is he? He called from your house. Got the baby tucked in bed, safe and sound, and everything's fine. Oh, thank God. Now, remember, Mr. Carter, any time you want Bill to sit for you again, you just call him up. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, my baby. My baby boy. Ned. Ned, he looks sick. What? Ned, why doesn't he open his eyes? Well, he's tired, Mrs. Carter. He just woke him up from a sound sleep. Bill Atkinson, don't you think you've done enough damage around here tonight? I think it's just about time you went home. See, what's all the ruckus about? What did I do? Bill, Mrs. Carter's upset because you took the baby out of the house. Well, I didn't think you'd mind. And, well, besides, Jane was only a block away. Well, the baby had a good time. Laughed and giggled all the way over. Say, he sure likes to ride on my bike. Bike? <laughs> Ned, did you hear that? He took our baby for a ride on a bicycle. Why, he might have fallen off. Oh, no, Mrs. Carter. I got one of those wire baskets up front. <laughs> he fits in there just fine. Basket? Oh, my poor baby. Here, let me take off those dirty clothes. We'll pop you into the tub and wash off all that awful grime. Another bath? We just had one a few hours ago. He's probably crawling with germs. Germs? Oh, no, Mrs. Carter. Well, look, see? There's not a germ on him. My dear boy, you wouldn't understand. Ned, call Dr. Richardson and have him come right over, and I'll expect you to deal with this young upstart. And bring those blankets upstairs when you come, will you please? All right, Nancy. Be with you in a minute. Oh, golly, Coach, I'm sorry. But honestly, I took good care of Jeff for you. Honest, I did. Of course you did, Bill. Mrs. Carter's just a bit unnerved, that's all. Well, yeah, I guess so. Gosh, you'd think I'd harm Jeff or something. Like I said, I take care of our babies all the time, and, and Mom says I'm pretty good at it. She trusts me with everything. Sure she does. Now, don't you worry about it, Bill. Here, take this. Oh, no, Coach, I, I couldn't take any money, especially after the way Mrs. Carter feels. Now, don't be silly. Here. Now, come on, take it. Well... Sure, you earned it. Now you drop around tomorrow night, Bill. We'll go over the baseball schedule just as we planned. Is it all right, do you suppose? Sure, why not? Now you better hustle, hustle home. It's way past sack time for you. Okay, Coach. Good night and thanks. Good night, Bill. Uh, Dr. Richardson, this is Ned. Ned Carter? I know it's late, but can you come right over? Well, it's Jeff. I, I don't know what's wrong. You can come right over? Oh, thanks. See you. <laughs> Poor little... Find any broken bones? <laughs> Track down any germs, Nancy? Oh, Ned, please. You certainly weren't very nice to Bill. Is that surprising? Look, what Bill did was an unfortunate circumstance I hadn't counted on. And you're coming home from club early was something of a surprise, too. Whatever do you mean? Mother's club never breaks up until 10.30 or thereabouts. Very funny you getting home at 9.30. Checking up, were you? Yes, if you must know, yes. Mother's intuition, if you want. <laughs> 
Oh, you feel pretty proud of yourself, don't you? Blasting my illusions about being able to take care of Jeff. No, don't be silly. Proud as a peacock, aren't you? That now you have something to hold over my head. You're being absolutely ridiculous, Ned. Well, now look, wouldn't I really seem pretty silly trying to convince you now that I can be trusted with Jeff? Oh, please. I'm Jeff's mother, and I wouldn't be a normal mother if I didn't get upset about a thing like this. Normal? I wonder. Please explain that remark. All you've done tonight is call me a poor father. What do you expect, to have somebody applause? No, I guess not. I'm a bad actor, any way you look at it. Well, Nancy, the vanquished admits defeat. I bow to your superiority. From now on, Jeff's all yours. Stop sounding like a martyr, Ned Carter, please. Oh, it's, it's not too bad for me, Nancy. Coach Carter's a lucky man. He has a lot of boys. Not his own, but boys who have a little faith in him. Oh, Ned, later, when Jeff gets a little older, then you can have him, too. It's all right. I can be patient. I'm willing to wait a couple of years more. Maybe the time will come when you can trust yourself to turn Jeff over to me once in a while. If you hadn't done a silly thing like this tonight, then it would be... All right, all right. All right, honey. You're right. Absolutely right. This was bound to happen sooner or later. I, I just hadn't counted on anything quite so dramatic. The issue of my ability to care for Jeff is pretty clearly defined now. I, I just wasn't equal to the test. Bill proved that. Bill? Yes. I envy him. He knows more about babies than I'll ever know. I felt pretty doggone ignorant tonight watching him with Jeff. Oh, Ned, you're exaggerating the whole affair way out of proportion. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, that must be Dr. Richardson, Ned. Let him in, will you? And Ned, don't look so hurt. You aren't supposed to know anything about bringing up children. <laughs> Well, folks, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Jeff. He's fit as a fiddle. Are you sure, Doctor? Positive. I've never seen a healthier baby. But, but that bicycle ride, wasn't that harmful for him? Oh, I don't think so. I will admit Bill Atkinson gave your son quite an unusual time tonight, but no damage has been done. You know, folks, Bill sits with my youngster many times. That boy? You allow him to sit with your baby? Why, yes, of course. He's got a way with children. You know, it's practically uncanny the way he handles youngsters. He's not always the soul of gentleness, but he makes up for it in other ways. Doctor, I think it's most unusual for a boy of his age to do babysitting. Oh, not at all, Mrs. Carter. Bill's got his mind set on college, plans to study medicine, and he needs the money. The Atkinsons are a big family, you know, and every penny counts. By the way, Coach Carter, isn't Bill your prize pitcher? Oh, he's much more than that. I wouldn't know what to do without him. <laughs> That's what his mother says. Bill's a godsend for her. As soon as he gets home from school, he takes over the youngsters. His father's mighty proud of him because, you see, Bill is the man of the house now, temporarily, at any rate. Is that so? His, I hadn't heard. His dad has been in a sanatorium for years. Oh? Tuberculosis. Every time I go out there to visit with him, he says the one thing he misses most are his wonderful kids. He misses them so very much. Most of all, he misses them when he's supposed to give them their bath and tuck them in bed at night like he always did. Now Bill does it for him. Why, Bill never told me this about his father. Well, that's like Bill. The Atkinsons always keep things to themselves. I admire their spunk. You know, when Mr. Atkinson was first told about his condition, he refused to leave his family. But he packed his bag in 15 minutes when I told him that staying home might endanger the whole family. Sure, he misses the kids, of course. He misses watching them grow up. But he has a tremendous faith. And he says he has lots of memories to carry him over the lonely hours. I'll have Bill take me out to see him soon, Doctor. Oh, fine. He enjoys company. But say, look at the time. I've got to hurry along. Thanks very much for coming, Doctor. I'm awfully sorry to have dragged you out so late at night. No trouble at all, folks. Uh, good night, and uh, don't worry about little Jeff. He's all fine. Right. Thanks, Doctor. Good Thank night. Thanks again for coming, Doctor. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll turn in, too, Nancy. Ned? Yes? Well, I, I... I just wanted to say I'm sorry. You know, it was just that I thought Jeff might have been hurt or something, and... Well, you know what I mean. Oh, uh, honey, look. We're not going to start that all over again, are we? No, it isn't that at all. It's just that... Well, yes? I... Ned, the girls want me to help them at the church bazaar tomorrow night, and... So? Well, do you, uh... Well, you'll, you'll just have to sit with the baby. Who, me? You mean you'd trust me? <laughs> of course I'd trust you. Oh, I've been silly. 
Oh, and Ned, I've been thinking. What? You know, I really should call Bill tomorrow and tell him how sorry I am for the way I acted. In fact, I might set out a little supper for you two before I leave for the bazaar, and then he could spend the evening with you. And you and Bill could take care of Jeff together. Oh, I see. You want him to coach me, is that it? <laughs> I mean, he, he does know so much about babies, and you really haven't had much experience. You know, you've got some catching up to do, Ned, because from now on, we'll be raising Jeff together. Hello, this is Margaret O'Brien again. You know, these days we're always reading in the newspapers about teenagers and the trouble they get into. Well, right now I'd like to speak up as a representative of the teenagers, because I'm sure the ones we read about only represent a small minority. I would like to hear more about the ones who are studying hard in school, learning to become good American citizens. I've traveled all over the country recently, and everywhere I went I met fine boys and girls that I'm proud to know. Instead of condemning these teenagers, we should try to find out the root of their troubles and try to help them. Most of them probably come from broken homes and never even learn the meaning of family prayer. I feel that if parents were to take the initiative to gather with their children every evening for just five or ten minutes of prayer, of asking God to guide them and their families through these perilous teenage years, that we'd all be a lot happier and there'd be much less cause for teenage trouble. And in keeping with this theme, let's always remember that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Babysitter, starring Barbara Hale and Lyle Betker. Margaret O'Brien was your hostess. Others in our cast were Marion Richmond, Anne Whitfield, Cliff Clark, and Jeff Silver. The script was written by A.L. Chop, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present Portrait of Cynthia with Bob Hope as host. Join us, won't you? Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.